Thank you for that powerful speech. Um, your words resonated deeply with me and I'm sure resonated with many of the students assembled here today in the audience. Thank you once again. Um, I'd like to start with uh, the questions um, by taking uh, us back to the start of your story. So uh, you grew up in Taiz in Yemen and also studied there and uh, come from a deeply sort of intellectual family with your father a lawyer and politician and your sister um, the first Yemeni to graduate from Harvard Law. What was it like um, in Yemen then and uh, how do you feel your childhood and your experiences then shaped your worldview and your uh, activism in later life? Look, my childhood that I raised in a very educated you know, uh, family. My father was a lawyer and he was also judge and he also served as a ministry of law and parliament um, um, uh, in one government, but uh, he always resigned from the government. So uh, this, you know, um, environment with discussion with my father, with uh, believing on myself as he um, uh, raised me, he nurtured me, he, he, he educated me and my, 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 my family, by the way, I belong to a very big family. I am one of the 10, you know, uh, uh, sister and brothers. So all of us were educated that, you know, that we should respect women and everyone has to carry responsibility. Everyone has to carry initiative. And that is what my father and my mother, you know, taught me. And that is what also encouraging me, you know, to do, to refuse any kind of injustice, not, not, just from the dictator also since uh, in the school you know any kind of I am I was very what a noisy uh, student you know that I was always have a lot of discussion have a lot of, have a lot of you know um, you know uh, activities inside you know the, the university and then the the uh, uh, university and most of my activities was demonstrations <laughs> and sitting. So it's you know this is you know and that is you know what I ask myself always: What can I do for my country? My country is suffering, and I know very well how how my country is a great country, how my country is worth democracy. Not because I am belong to the 21st century that all the world has, you know, all the countries around the world has to, you know, has to live with democracy and has to be free from dictatorship and from uh, tyranny, etc. But also, I have a very, very big history as a country that led by two queens, Queen of Sheba. Uh, I, I know that all of you uh, know uh, know her, uh, Queen Bilqis who ruled our country in a very uh, prosperous you know, um, uh, area and uh, time. And Queen Arwa, that under the rule of these two queens, Yemen was very, very strong and Yemen was very, very rich. And why shouldn't you know, Yemen be again like that? And why should we, we be like, you know, we are a poor country while we have a great wealth, while we suffer from tyranny while we have a good history of democracy and we belong to 21st and all of that gave me that motivation you know to do something to face all the crises in my country in social field political field um, uh, all you know uh, security field all other field and always I said I am the one and this is what you should say everyone always say that I am the one who can create change and don't afraid from change at all if you're afraid from change, who will do it? So don't count that anyone, I should wait for another one who can no, create change and always put yourself on the first line. And also, as I said, take the first step. You mentioned uh, both in your speech and your answer just now that student activism, uh, especially at university, played a big part in your um, life so far, as well as your uh, served as a foundation for your later activism in later life. Um, here at Cambridge, we have a strong uh, tradition and history of uh, demonstrations from students, and uh, Cambridge is currently uh, a place where there is a lot of student activism, particularly on climate change. What would you 
offer as advice to students engaging in activism here? Uh, and how would you sort of recommend dealing with the challenges of making your voice heard um, and getting the point across to help dismantle um, structures? Look, I believe that if the students believe on their role on creating change, they will make a very big difference in the world. So I think the problem that is that the students until now, they didn't know how much they are strong and what is their power and what is their ability. So I think if you are organized enough and, and starting to think about, okay, I will study very well, I will build my future in any area that I want, but also I should be involved in the public life, any kind of public life, not just political, political, social, economic, etc., etc. For example, if the students in the democrat country, that we, we call them democrat country, and now I'm, I'm hesitating to say that because unfortunately they are a democrat in their countries, but they don't want another countries to be democrat. And this is unfortunately what is happening with US, with Britain, with other, you know, some of the countries of the EU. Unfortunately, because they are supporting the dictators. So if you, as a student, making your voice very loud and telling your government, as we made a revolution against our governments, our authoritarian regimes, and force them to leave, you should force your governments to stop supporting dictators. They should stop supporting, they should stop selling weapons to those dictators. You should force them, and you can, by the way. You can, it, it will be so easy by you, student. Very easy. But now the, 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 the world is, you know, there is a lot of deterioration, you know, in peace, in, you know, with hatred, you know, every, everything. They, because many, many reasons. But what of that, that students until now, didn't act. So it is your time to stop the blood around the world. And you can make it. Because this, this blood around the world, especially in my region, one of the main reasons is because of the silence of the Western governments or their complicity. What happened in Syria? Now, nine years of war could be stopped if Britain act, or US act, or UN act. Do, if they did their rule on, stop, you know, on, on supporting the will of people for freedom and democracy. The same thing in Yemen, the same thing in Libya. So the problem now is those Western government, and most of Western government, let's not tell all of them, most of the Western governments, including uh, Britain, yes, I know that you are Brexit, you know, <laughs> that you, but also European, with uh, Britain and also America, Canada, they didn't do the rule on protecting people. They support the dictators and they made their interests above their values and principles. And as I always said, and I will repeat it, they are committing a very big mistake because this is, this is a wrong strategy. So their strategy should be based on future. For the future, for building interests, for protecting their interests for the future is to be with people who are suffering in the land, who are paying a very high cost who are bleeding every day in the street, in the prisons, for their freedom, justice, and democracy. And they will not give up. They will not give up. So if they want more blood, they should stay like their strategies now, to be silenced or to be complicit. 
If they want more refugees, they should continue supporting the dictators or the counter-revolution leaders, Mohammed bin Salman and Mohammed bin Zayed, the Crown Prince of Saudi and the Crown Prince of UAE, and the Sisi. If they want more immigrants and more you know, refugees. And always, then they scream, no, there is refugees came, there is, no, why do they come from their countries to the, because you support the dictators. Because you didn't stop them. They, those people, they didn't come here just, you know, to have fun. They are fleeing from the fire of tyranny and from tourists. So you students can do a lot to support, to, 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 to uh, stop climate change, to support human rights, and to support those people who, you know, sacrificing and struggling for freedom and democracy, and to make the, the, the world free, free, not just, you know, our free from tyrannies, from terrorism, and from instability. Um. On uh, the Yet crisis in Yemen, uh, you've been quite vocal in your criticism of the Houthis, the Iranians, the US drone policy, uh, as well as Saudi-backed military intervention. Um, what do you believe the way forward is to resolve the crisis? And are you optimistic that we can see a resolution within the next 10 years? Um, look, when I explain to you what is happening now, what is the suffering of people, now, you should know this darkness will not last. This is a temporary, temporary. And am I optimistic for the future? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. Because I know very well that those people will not stop sacrificing, struggling for their freedom and democracy. And I know very well that every democratic country around the world, they took decades to be free from dictators. Decades. And I know very well that we make a very big victory. Imagine we are now in 2020. We are now in the ninth you know, anniversary of our revolution, ninth anniversary of our revolution in Arab Spring, and please, Remember with me, we toppled the dictator of Egypt. We toppled the dictator of Tunis, of Yemen, of Yemen, of Libya, of Sudan, Algeria. Seven dictators. We freed the world from seven dictators in just nine years. Don't you consider this a, as a kind of victory? And those dictators, they ruled our countries for decades of injustice, of killing, of wars, of terrorism, of hatred, of stealing. And we did a great work. And now we are paying the price of making that great revolution. We are paying the price of this great, great, our great revolution and those, this cost we paid because of the revenge of the counter-revolution. And remember, we are surrounded by the monarchy uh, uh, countries, the authoritarian monarchy countries, tyrannies monarchy countries that doesn't want democracy. Doesn't want democracy. And they are afraid. They don't want democracy in our countries. And they are afraid from it because that means that their people will revolt one day, will take the aspiration. And so they wage the violence, they wage the war. Their, their counter-revolution take many faces. The militia coup like what happened in Yemen, the war also that have what happened in Yemen and the occupation also which, by Saudi and the Emirates, so this kind of counter-revolution. The military coup in Egypt, the civil war in Libya, the terrorists, Terrorism in, in, in Syria, so they took all the, and this is the counter-revolution. And if you, you study history, no, they, I beat some, some of you study history, and I, I, I assume that most of you know that, that every great revolution followed by counter-revolution, every great revolution, but at the end, who won the battle? 
the people. The people. So we are still, still, you know, in you know the revolution, paying the cost of uh, fighting for democracy and freedom. It will take time, and don't ask our Arab people or any people to. Okay, you have to revolt from the dictator and you have to democracy at the same time. This is, you know, stupid. And it doesn't happen. So we are paying it and we're ready to pay more and more. But the decision is not from us because we took our decision. We will not give up and we promise this, you know, coming generations that they will live in a democratic countries and in a prosperity and like your grand grandfathers and your grand grandmothers promised you. And without their sacrifices, without their struggle, you will not have this good, you know, life. So we promise now who decide is the Western government? Is the Western government? Will they continue protecting the dictators or continue to be silent against their, you know, uh, in front of their violence? Will they continue their alliance with them? That, will, that means that it will cost us a lot. Uh, but uh, at the end, we are the winner, and they will be the loser, because we are the future, not the dictators. Yeah. On that point, um you met, you've been throughout your uh, speech, as well as your answers, as well as your sort of wider work. Um, you've been quite um, vocal in your desire for Western governments to stop supporting these dictators, as you mentioned earlier. Um, what sort of role do you would you like to see Western governments and Western powers take um, within the Middle East? And do you feel that um, what what do you feel they should do to ensure they don't go over the line of in, encroaching on? national sovereignty or interfering with um, grassroots movements within these countries? How far should they go in their intervention and exercising their influence in these regions? Look, uh, I want to say this, uh, something, that when we talk about Western, again, it's Western governments, not the people, not the media, not the NGOs, not the universities, because they did a great work with people, but we encourage them to do more and more. Um, the question about the interfere from Western to the, uh, you know, the affairs of the countries, how much it should be, you know. I will tell you um, yani an example where when the America and some of the Western countries decided to occupy Iraq and also wars in, uh, wage war uh, in Afghanistan. So they interfere. And they said, we will produce democracy, and, and they fell. They interfered, they collapsed the countries, and the democracy didn't you know, appear. The opposite happened. Collapsed countries, sectarian uh, wars, uh, poverty, terrorism, etc., etc. And when they didn't decide to a country like Syria, also, it collapsed. So they are between, the, either they interfere in a very bad way, or they don't interfere, and all of it lead to the, uh, you know, to collapse the countries, and also collapsing the global peace. So when we call the international community to help people in their battle for freedom and democracy, we call them to do their responsibility it's their responsibility that has been written in our, in the human rights, international human rights de de declaration, and most of the human rights, you know, uh, agreements. And that is the purpose of uh, the existence of the United Nations and Security Council. So that is their role that to, to protect the human security. And when they help the people, they should help them to gain their democracy, to reach to their real democracy, not to destroy them for stealing their wealth or for occupying them or for forcing an alternative forces or parties for them. No, that is not what that we call. We call them to interfere 
as their responsibility to protect human security, to protect democracy, and to don't wage any other wars. Like when Saudi said that they will help Yemenis, they destroy Yemen. They have another agenda. So when we call international community to don't have another agenda, the only agenda that they should have, which is the agenda of supporting and defending people's dream for freedom and democracy. And this is their, their, this is their, their responsibility. Their resp and at least when any dictator, first, any dictator start to kill his people, they should freeze his assets. The first thing, we took long until we convinced, you know, the internet to, to, to uh, long time to, to, to freeze the assets of, uh, of Ali Abdullah Saleh, for example, to freeze his assets. Also, International Criminal Court should follow, should prosecute those um, criminals, those dictators, those, you know, uh, war criminals. So there is many, many other, you know, other procedures that they can either through the UN, through the Security Council, or individually. But unfortunately, that, is, that doesn't happen. When they interfere, they interfere in a very bad way, and they collapse the country, and they don't make the democracy to return. And when they did, in, uh, doesn't interfere, also it leads to the same reason. And between interfere and inter doesn't interfere, unfortunately, they think that they preserve their interests while they collapsing it, while they produce more terrorism and they produce more uh, global insecurity.